Welcome back everyone. I hope you joy, enjoyed the fish break um, with the nice animated GIFs. Um, so for the next step, um, we need to start organizing more. Right, so, and the nice thing is, is that in this case we have three dimensions, right? So we have the dimension, which is the, the type of fish, so the fish name. Then we have different lakes, and we have these lakes measured in three different years. So we have a really nice kind of 3D, ma 3D matrix structure, right? So um, we can use 3D and 4D and 5D matrices in R, and I think that this data set is a really good example on why you should want to use a, a 3D or a 4D uh, matrix. Um, so a little bit more organization using a 3D matrix. So since we have three very clear dimensions, I'm going to use these three dimensions and put all of the data into one big, um, one big more or less variable, right? Um, but first we have to put missing values in because um, having a zero there is not accurate, right? That you, if you, if you think about fishing and they did electro fishing, so they probably got a lot, but um, not seeing a fish in a certain lake doesn't mean that they're not there. It just means that you haven't observed it, right? Um, so a question to you guys is if we have 19 lakes um, and 26 types of fish, um, and three different years, how many NAs do we need to put in? Um, and it's, a, it's, it's one of these questions that when you want to make a matrix like that, uh, you, need to, you need to kind of figure this out beforehand. So the way that I did it is make a nice three-dimensional matrix, right? So first I'm saying that uh, get the NAs. So I'm, I'm first going to make a single vector with all of the values that I want to put in this matrix. And initially I want to make an empty matrix. Um, so I'm going to say repeat NA, take the length of F names, so the fish names that we previously defined, then multiply that with the length of the lakes and then multiply that by three, which is the number of years that we have. And then I'm going to use the array function and the array function as the first parameter takes the content. So those are the NAS that I just defined. And then we have to specify the three dimensions that we want to have. So my first dimension is going to be the name of the fish. The second dimension is going to be the lakes and the third dimension is going to be time. So that's just three. And because it is R, we can use um, names. So we can, we can name or we can give row names, column names, and then to the other dimension, we can also give names. Um, so I'm just going to say that, well, give them names. So use dim names or so dimension names is a list. And the first element of the list is the names of the first dimension, which is of course F names we have the names of the lakes and then I combine 2017, 2018 and 2020. Um, so to have them by name. Um, and this creates an, a, a three dimensional matrix, which we can now query. Um, of course, we have to fill it first with the, the data that we have obtained. Um, but I think that this is a really good example of why you would want to have a three-dimensional matrix. And this will simplify our code a lot. And, and we will see that in the end. Yeah, but three-dimensional matrix, three different dimensions. We have a fish dimension, a lake dimension, and a year dimension. And by putting it in a 3D matrix, we can kind of switch between dimensions very easily um, by using things like the apply function. The apply function can also use three different dimensions. But first, let's fill it up. So hey, what, what kind of fishies did we get? So hey, of course, what I'm going to do is just say, well, I'm going to make a for loop for F in fishy name. So F is fish. Um, then we are going to say for L in lakes. So L is the current lake that we're looking at. And then how am I going to fill it up? Well, I'm just going to say fishy, which is the three dimensional matrix for this fish for this lake in 2017 and now I just have to compute how many there are. Um, so I see that I still use the old structure here because I, I put this in a function, right? So we had this fix names function, um, but the slide is, is not updated. So it just uses the GSUB um, because I didn't figure out until like yesterday evening that 
there was also this uh, I I E error in there. Um, but what do we do? Well, we just say, well, take from F2017, where the lake is this, and then we're going to grab the fish name um, in the fixed names that we created, right? So I'm just going to take all uh, the, the whole column with fish names out, and then I'm just going to say uh, greppel, and uh, greppel means do a, a, a grep, so match the fish name that we have against all of the names in this thing. And then we're going to do that for 2017, 2018, and 2020. Um, so greppel is, uh, the L here stands for logical. So if I do grep, it will return to me one, two, three, four, five. So all of the indexes of the rows that match. But when you use grep L, then it just gives you back a true false vector. And since we want to combine it, right, because I want to make sure that I get only the fish which are in the lake that we're currently looking at, because we have a double for loop, um, I need to use the L grep L function, right, because of the ampersand here. So this gives me back a true false vector, this gives me back a true false vector, and of course where both elements are true, this is a fish which lives in the lake that we are currently filling. And then of course I'm going to ask which, and then ask length to get the number of fish that were in this lake in 2017 having the name F. So F is the fish name, um, and the G sub here is to standardize from this uh, set to SS, this returns a true false vector, and then we do this logical AND with the lake name, and so we get a which true true false, and then here we go from having a vector which has true and false to the indexes, and then from this we just ask the length, because those are the number of fish that we caught at this lake with this name. All right. And now we can see, or this is the first real example where we can really, really easily use this um, three-dimensional structure of our matrix. And so the first dimension is fish type, right? So I'm going to say, let's see what we dragged up. So I'm just going to calculate total fish, right? So total fish will be the total amount of each fish species um, that we um, used. So I'm going to apply to our 3D matrix where I standardize the third dimension to be 2017, right? So this goes from a three-dimensional matrix where we select or where we fix one of the dimensions. And then, so I do comma, comma. So first dimension, anything. Second dimension, anything. The third dimension needs to be 2017. And then to this matrix, which I get, so we go from a three-dimensional kind of box to a, a one-dimensional, or a, a, a two-dimensional um, matrix. And then to the first dimension, compute the sum. And do this again for 2018, and do this as well for 2020. And I'm just going to row bind these together, yeah, because here for each of these dimensions I get a vector. So I bind these three vectors together, and then I'm just going to put the row names on there, saying that, well, this was 2017, this was 2018, and this was 2020. So when I do type total fish in R, then this is what I get. And now we start seeing something um, interesting, but also something which worried me a lot. Um, because we can see that sometimes some fish have very low observation numbers. So if we look at the first one, at the Hecht, um, then in 2017, across all of the different lakes that we had, we fished up only 56 of them, which is not a lot, but enough for statistics, right? But in 2018, we only observed 18 of them. And 18 is not really enough to start doing statistics, right? If you want to get like reliable statistics, you want to have like 30-ish observations of a fish. For example, the ukulele is even worse. In 2017, there were only two of them caught across 24 different lakes. So statistically speaking, we can't say anything about this fish. Funnily enough, in 2020, they actually caught 324 of them. So in, in 2020, we have more than enough statistical power to say something about this ukulele, um, but we can't compare the 2020 ukulele catches to the 2017 and 2018 ones. Um, so... 
Species dominance and catchability of bigger fish. Larger fish are harder to catch with electrofishing gear. Yeah, but you can't tell me that you caught 300 in 2020, but in the two years or in the years preceding to that, you didn't catch any of them. Um, and we'll get back to that because the the the, the for example the cow bars is something that we can you can't do any statistics on these numbers. Um, the Steinbein, again, you have 37, which is enough in 2018. But you have to remember that these are summarized across all of the different lakes, right? So that means that a lot of lakes will have no uh, uh, Steinbeiser being caught. Um, but some of them are really good, right? The Rotauge and the Barsch, they have really good numbers. So that these are fish species that we can do statistics on. Um, but on the other ones, these are really hard. Yeah, in 2020, we can do statistics on the Ukulai, um, but we can't do any statistics in 2017 and 2018. The nice thing is we can do the exact same thing for lakes. And the code only changes in one position. I only change the one by a two. Instead of saying, give me the sum of the first dimension, I'm going to say, give me the sum of the second dimension. And that's it. And this same thing, the rest of the code changes the same. I'm just changing the dimension. And now it gives me the lake overview. Right? So in 2017, in the cut hamster colk, 40 fish were caught. In 2018, 46 fish were caught. But in 2020, 360 fish were lifted out of this lake. And here we see this issue coming in, right? So this is, this is a, it is, a, it is something which statistically speaking is really, really hard to deal with. Um, because the number of fish caught per lake are so different, we probably can't compare some lakes from one year to the other, right? We, we can't compare the fish that were caught in the cod hamster colk in 2018 with the fish that were caught in 2020. Because the, the, the total amount being caught is so much different that the percentages, right? The, the percentage of fish is also going to fluctuate heavily. Um, because in, in this case, being one fish out of 46 in this lake means that you are at X percent. But here, if you catch one of them, then one of them is one out of 360. So that is less than 0. Point something percent. While here it is like 2% of whole, the whole fish he's caught. And here it's like less than like a third of a percent. Fortunately, there are some lakes where we have relatively stable numbers and relatively high numbers. So we can, we can look at that as well. Um, but this is relatively difficult to deal with statistically. Um, and yeah, there are some things that you can say about it, but um, it, it's just difficult. Um, but fortunately, we have at least three lakes here. Um, but the, the question here is, is, do we want to deal with fish numbers? Or do we want to deal with things like fish percentage? Like 5% of the fish in this lake is a bash. Uh, or um, do we want to say 47 fish caught were a, a, a road auge, right? Because that's something very fundamental in the analysis. If we, if we deal with numbers or if we deal with percentages, we'll change the whole downstream analysis. Um, so that's something that we want to um, investigate, right? But the first thing that we have to do is define what we find is enough observations, right? So we want to select fish that are fishy enough, right? So we have enough observations of them. And the thing is, is that we, we want to just recreate our three-dimensional matrix um, based on some of the filtering parameters that we have. Um, and we want to make space for a group which is called other, right? Because if you don't have enough observations of this fish, we don't throw it out because it's still a fish that we caught. So it still contributes to the total number. Um, so we have to define this other group and every fish that is not fishy enough, right? Where we have too few observations. This whole fish species, we just merge into a group which is called other, 
or side catch or whatever you want to call it. Um, so the way that I did this is just like first figure out which fishies are fishy enough and which lakes are lakey enough, so to speak, right? Because we need to know which fish are consistently measured at high numbers and we need to know which lakes are consistently uh, having a large number of fish in there so that we can do statistic. Um, so hey, we load the data again, we compute how many fish there are in the other group and we can easily do that because I'm just going to kind of shrink my 3D matrix, I'm going to create a new 3D matrix which is smaller, but we already calculated the total number of fish per lake, right? So we, we already have this variable called total lake which has these numbers of how many fish there are in total for each of the years. So I'm just going to load in the data again like we did before with the double for loop, leave the other group empty and then the other group is going to be filled by just computing saying that well we know how many fish were caught in this lake in this year and then we're just going to subtract from the just newly recreated and reloaded matrix the sum of all of the fish that were in the groups that we deemed to be okay. So first we want to filter right and create a new 3D matrix so and we want to have some number saying that well above this number I'm happy with the number of fish and above this number I'm happy with the number of fish that we got from this lake. Um, so I just chose 30 and why do I choose 30? 30 is the number that you need to do correlations with. So if you want to do correlation um, a reliable correlation estimate is when you have 30 observations of x, 30 observations of y. So that's why my general rule of thumb is that if you do something um, and you're not sure which kind of statistics you can use, right? If you, if you are very certain about what kind of distributions you have, um, you can go lower. Um, but for me, right, I'm, I'm, I just saw this data set for the first time. So for me, it seemed logical to say, well, a fish species for which we have 30 observations, at least for every year, right? So for every year, I want to have to I want to have seen the fish uh, 30 times. So that's if in this in this matrix, right? So here we would say that Barsh is good enough because every year we saw at least 30 of them. But the Hecht is not good enough because in 2018 we we only saw 18 of them. So that's below 30. Um, and this is that hey, in the back of your mind you have to keep in mind that there are many different lakes. Um, so even by demanding that we have observed the fish 30 times, it could still be that we run into a situation where we have one fish observed in a single lake and then in the other lake we see 29 fish. So, um, but for me 30 was kind of the rule of thumb that I applied. So I'm just going to say, well, I'm going to create fishy enough, a variable, um, so I'm going to apply to the total fish just say well which ones are above 30 and then I, I'm going to apply through the columns all right so I'm going to say for each of the columns are all of the values above 30 and then give me the names because the names are the, the names of the fish that I want and then of course I'm going to add a new fish type which is called other so we have fishy enough to combine with other and then of course I'm going to do the exact same thing for the lakes. So again here I'm going to just take the total lake when there are more than 30 fish observed in a lake um, consistently across all of the three years. So eh, all of the three years need to have at least 30 observations and then give me the names of the lake. Um, so I'm just going to then create my 3D matrix, right? So I'm going to say, well, make a new 3D matrix. Um, here we have the, uh, the content. So of course we're going to fill it with NAs again. Um, so hey, take the array, do the NAs, and now the dimensions have changed. Hey, because we now have on the one dimension the fishy enough plus the other group. Um, we have the lakey enough, so the lakes which have enough observations. And then again, we still have three years. Um, and then of course I'm going to add the names to it as well. I'm going to refill the 3D matrix. So I'm just going to do the exact same double for loop that I had. Um, so, it, it, so I'm going to say 4F in fishy enough, 4L in lakey enough, and then I'm just going to reload it the way that I load it again. And then of course I have to compute how many fish were in the other group. 
and fortunately we had already computed the total lake so I'm just going to say for each lake in lakey enough um, take the total amount of fish caught in this lake in 2017 minus the sum of the from the matrix that we just reloaded and then this is of course the number of fish in the other category for this lake in 2017 and the same thing I do for 2018 and 2020. All right, is this clear? Let's um, make sure that my R code is at the same point. Um, so I can I can show you the notepad window as well. Um, yeah, so it's it's just the same code. So we load in the data files, get the latitude and longitude, make this table, and then do the F law yeah, where we where we have the nice plot which we can overlay on Google Maps. Um, make the 3D matrix, do the total fish, do the total lakes, and then have we define what is fishy enough, what is lakey enough, and then the first conclusion is, is that we have enough measurements for around 8 fish species and around 11 lakes. So we can use 11 lakes and we can use 8 fish species which are consistently measured at high enough amounts to start doing statistics on them. Um, so let's remodel our data and then I'm just going to use the exact same code as I did before so this is just a copy paste and then I'm going to fill in the other group um, so let's just select all of this all the way to the top and then switch to R and then it'll take a little bit of time and A little bit of time, a little bit of time, so it's reloading the data, calculating, making the nice plot, filling in the fishies, then we have here all of the observations, and then we do the same thing again, and then we compute the other. So now when we look at fishy, um, it looks like this, right? So now we have our... So we have our species, so here we look at the 2017 dimension, here we have the species, so Barsch, Rot, Auge, Aal, Schlei, Brazig, Roodveder, Neustacherlich, Gibbel, Giebel, and then the other. And then here we have the lakes, and of course we have the exact same thing for 2018. So we kind of reduced our data set. We can still see that there are issues here, right? In 2018 we only observed one road auge in the cod hamster colk and 41 fish which were not of any of these types that we had. So that's a little bit difficult as well to deal with but that's that's one of these issues with real data real data is always having these kinds of challenges yeah, but for example we can see that in the visa der Meer, um, the bars is the most dominant species with 109 caught in 2018 yeah, and funnily enough in the visa der Meer, if we look at in 2017 we see that although bars was the dominant species we also got like road auge and and Brazai and, and Roodvelder. So that's a little bit strange because we didn't catch any of these fish species a year later. So the, the, the consistency of one year to the next year is, is very strange. It's not, it doesn't seem very unbiased. Um, but we'll have to look at that more. But that's the way that I treat my data. So I'm just going to kind of minimize the number of dimensions, or the, not the number of dimensions, but I'm going to reduce each of the dimensions to dimensions which are um, having enough observations so that I can do something with it. Right, so conclusion, using 30 observations for fish, per, uh, 30 observations per year for a fish and 30 observations, we have enough data on eight fish species and 11 lakes. Um, and then it looks like this for 2017. All right, so we also want to compute the percentage of fish caught, right? So for each of the species that we have, we want to make some plots, we want to make some pie charts, we want to visually see how many fish we caught and how much percent of it was for, uh, so how much percent of a certain fish was um, something versus how many percent of the other ones. Um, so what we can do is we can calculate the percentage of total fish um, for each species, right? So how much how much bars did we caught out of all of the fish that we caught. Um, so the percentage is of course defined as having a hundred times the sum of a certain fish dimension type and then of course divided by the total number of fish caught which is the sum of the sum of the fish dimension. Right, so here we see first the sum 
of the first dimension of the 2017 matrix. Um, yeah, so we take out 2017 and then we do the same thing. So we take out 2017 again, first dimension, compute the sum across the different uh, rows and then we sum everything together. So this is just the total number of fish. And th I call this P fish. So this is for pie chart. So when I want to do a pie chart visualization, um, I can I can use this P fish to do the plotting. And I do the same thing again for the lakes. And the only thing again which changes is just changing the dimension in the apply function. So instead of looking at the one dimension, which is the fish dimension, here I'm looking at the second dimension, which is the lake dimension. The mathematics doesn't change, the code doesn't change. The only thing which changes is instead of having a one, we now have a two because we want to look into the second dimension. So let's see the results from the first dimension. So I make a pie chart, right? I use the nice colors that I got already. And I say, um, plot the fish say that this was done in 2017. So in 2017 we can see that the majority of species that we caught was Paars and Roodveder. Um, the Giebel was the kind of one of the, the lowest ones together with the Aal and the sh uh, Schleier um, and, and the Brase. Um, hey, but we see that there are three or four fish species which are caught in relatively high amounts. So we in 2017 we got a lot of baars, a lot of road feather, a lot of road auger and some Neustachlinger. Then we have some minor fish species and then we have the other group which just contains all of the other fish that we caught. Of course I can do the exact same thing saying now use the P lake and here we see the contribution and I, I'm, I'm using 2020 here um, for the lakes. Right, so we can see that in 2020, the lake which gave us the most fish was the Kiesteig Brellinge um, and uh, the Kothamster Kolk and the Stedorfer Baggersee are the three lakes which are more or less having kind of a large amount of fish taken from them. And we see here that the uh, uh, Meitzler Zee is, is relatively minor, so a lot, uh, not a lot of fish were caught there. Um, yeah, but that's that's just the way that, that it is. Of course, we can do the... Uh, Oh, that's way too short. See, now I, I like that's that's always what you get when you do a presentation. Then, um, if you do it for the first time, then you might run through your slides way way too quickly. So I was actually expecting to spend like forty to fifty minutes on this part, but I actually only used twenty-seven. So. Let's do some questions so far or remarks or discussion because you guys probably have your own ideas about how you would want to approach a problem like this. Faya, no, 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 we still have part number three. So, but this is part number two and I went <laughs> through it way too quickly. We're not going to do firearm yet. yet. We could do because then I'm home earlier for my birthday and I can eat cake again. Um, but... Uh, I do think that it's uh, that it's good that you guys ask some questions, right? Because like, he does doof it. So um, any questions? Do you think using a three D matrix is good, or would you say no? I would just use the um, F2017 variable or I would use, use the F2020 variable, right? Because we started off having three different variables um, have, which we also use to fill it. Um, yeah, but I, I try to always kind of get gather my data into one big data structure where I have most of the um, interesting properties that I want. Um, and the nice thing is, is that it actually helps you a lot with coding, right? So and like here, what we saw is that hey, just changing the dimension, yeah, so just changing the one by the two will give you um, the, the same analysis, but in this case, it, it's just done properly in a way. But there's of course a lot of different ways that you could do this, right? It's not that this is the only way to analyze it, but yeah, for me as a statistician, I I always hammer on sample size because if you if you if you catch one fish from a lake then of course this fish is not going to be representative for all of the fish in the lake if you catch five of them 
is that going to be representative? When having a lack of enough sampling data for a lake or a fish species, would it make sense to group them? Group what? Lakes? So take two different lakes and group them together? Or treatments? Because the let's let's show this table, right? So let's look a little bit at this table. This is the this is the kind of fishy data for 2017. So if you look at the lake like Lomore, right? The Lomore Lake, we 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 caught 82 Neustachlicher, right? But for example, in a lake like Kothamster Kolk, we caught zero. Here we caught like 30 fish in the whole lake. Here we caught around 90 fish in the whole lake. So in this lake, right, if we if we just assume that we did a good job, right, and we caught like a random sample from the lake, which is the underlying assumption of all statistics, is that you randomly sample, then we would say that we cannot merge Lomore with Cothamster Kolk. Because in Lomore, like almost 90% of the fish living there are of our Neustachlinger, while in Kothamster Kolk, 0% of the fish living there are Neustachlinger. So we can't just, just kind of squeeze these two things into each other and say, well, because they are different things, right? They are different lakes, and you can only merge lakes when they are similar, right? And that's, that's just the way that it works. If I have a lake and I just throw in like 500 turtles, um, then of course this lake will now be different from a lake which has no turtles. And I can't group a lake with turtles with a lake without turtles. That's statistically that's that's very very shaky saying that I'm I'm going to just group them all together. We will start grouping, of course, because that's part number three is to kind of see how we can. Uh... All right, let's assume that Hopples and Lomar are managed by a fishing club X Y Z and Visa de Meda and Plockhorst by a club A B C. Yeah, but but. Um, so let's see, Hopples and Lomar. So Hopples and Lomar, um, they might be similar, right? Do you see that in 2017? Um, let's look at the whole thing, right? Um, we can actually do that relatively easy. Let me switch you guys to the R window and let's look at fishy, right? So you are saying that you want to look at um, the lake called uh, Hopples. So let's take Hopples and take Lomar, right? Hopples and Lomar. So these are then, so in 2017, we had 24 Rotauge, zero for Lomar. Um, we had Neustachlinger. So Neustachlinger are apparently in 2017, the dominant sp fish species. But a year later, the Neustachlinger apparently are not the dominant fish species anymore. The dominant fish species in Lomor is now the Roodveder, and in Hoppels, the dominant fish species is the Brase. A year later, Neustachlinger are the dominant fish species in Hoppels. In Lomor, the Roodveder is still the dominant species. So can we group these lakes together? Statistically speaking, I don't know. Let's take one year, right? Let's let's analyze this. Like let's say 2020, right? Let's do a correlation between these two lakes, right? Just say correlate them together. Then you can see that there is no correlation in 2020 between these lakes. So if there's no correlation between the fish that you got in the in the first lake or in the second lake, then of course we can't group them. These are two lakes which are completely different, right? Also, we have to deal with the fact that there is a lake effect. One lake might have like very high CO2 content. Another lake might have very high um, nitrite content, 
right? And this might have an influence on the type of fish that live there, right? The thing that you have to remember is you can only group things together when they are similar. And similar generally is defined as not being different. And not being different is something that we can statistically test, right? We can do a statistical test saying, is this lake different from the other lake? If we do this test here, right? So if we just say core.test, um, oh, then I have to actually separate them out because it wants to have two of these. So give me hopples and then give me Lomar. Right, then it will tell us that new. No. <laughs> These things are very, very different, statistically speaking. Right, there's a non significant p value. In this case, a significant p value means that they are equal. Um, so, Hopples and Lomar are not equal to each other. So, grouping them um, will not work. And, like, if you would. If you would just group all of them together, right, and you would write a paper um, and you would submit it to a journal, if the journal would send it out for review and one of the reviewers would be a statistician, um, it would just they would just reject your paper and saying they are putting things together um, which do not belong together. So you're putting apples and pears and then assuming that you can you can put apples and pears together and then analyze the taste. Right, and then compare that to when you put apples and bananas together and compare the taste. Um, so every every lake is a single experiment, more or less, right? And um, having multiple lakes means that you do the same experiment multiple times, and you can group these, of course, when you um, when you when you have some indication that they are equal. Um, so one of the things that is striking here is that these lakes or hey, if I would just take one lake, right? So um, are we recording? Yeah, we're recording. No worries. Um, and, and Twitch saves it as well, right? Um, not the core, but if we just look at the Lomar Lake, right? Um, not 2020, look at all three dimensions. Right, so if we look at the Lomar Lake, then we see that 2017, 2018, and 2020, um, we see that there is a big shift in the lake. Right, we go from having Neustachlinger being the dominant species, almost 90% being caught in 2017. In 2018, this picture flips totally around. Now, Rotfeder with more than 90% being caught um, is, is Rotfeder. And in 2020, we see that it's the same thing. So if we would do a correlation on this thing, right? So we would just say correlate. And then in theory, of course, since we have very few values, um, hey, because we're having three vectors, which only have a length of nine, um, we can't use Pearson correlation. But hey, just for the sake of argument, let's use Pearson correlation. If we use Spearman correlation, which is actually the one that we should use because we have a limited sample size and we don't want to be sensitive to outliers. If we use Spearman correlation, then we see that 2017 is highly correlated to 2018. But why is it highly correlated? It's highly correlated because most of the fish species do not occur in any of the years, right? So it seems that they are relatively well correlated while they are actually not that correlated, right? So the real correlation estimate for 2017 versus 2018 ranges from like being as low as 6% correlated to being as high as 96% correlated. Yeah, so this is a massive issue of zero, zero inflation in this case. Yeah, but the, 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 the Pearson correlation will give you the lower bound estimate and the Spearman correlation will give you the higher bound estimate. Yeah, but if we just look at the data kind of from a distance and we would look at then we would say, well, Lomar, the, the lake in 2018 is probably groupable with the lake in 2020. Right, most of the the dominant species didn't change, um, so it's just that we caught a little bit more Neustachlinger in 2020 than we did in 2018. Um, but the 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 data here, 
is, is relatively consistent in a way. Um, but 2017 doesn't belong there. So we can't even, if we, if we compare the fish population in 2018, then we cannot really use the fish population in 2017 to compare it with because it's very different. So we kind of have Lomar Lake 2017 and then we have Lomar Lake in the other two years. In the other two years you can group together, most likely. But the 2017 is probably not something that you can group together. But in this case, um, you can formalize, and we'll do that in like the next hour, we can formalize when we can put these things together and how we can kind of um, analyze them a little bit. Um, a little bit better, right? But um, I didn't make any conclusions from this. You know what? We still have some time left. We're going to do three slides, which are after the lecture, and then I'm going to show you guys um, the, the break. Um, so let's switch back to the PowerPoint. So the number of fish percentage caught by year, right? So let's do a pie chart, and I'm just doing a pie chart again. So I'm just calculating the yeah, taking 2017, go across the rows, take the sum, um, and then take the sum of the whole thing. Um, so yeah, take the sum of the sums. So yeah, this is just calculating the percentage for the different years and making a nice pie chart out of it. So you can see that from one year to the other year to the other year, there is a big, big difference across the lakes. So across all of the lakes in, in fish population. So you go from having a, a, a massive amount of road fader to having even more road fader to having only 25% road fader. And so it's the dominant species in 2017, it's the dominant species in 2018, but in 2020 it's all of a sudden not the dominant species anymore because that is actually the bars. If we do the same thing for the lakes, then we end up with something like this. And now we start seeing what the issue is. The Stedorfer Bachersee contributed less than 10% to the total fish amount in 2017, while almost 40% of the fish caught in 2018 came from the Stedorfer Bachersee. So the impact that this lake has on the total amount of fish is changing year by year. And of course, that means that we can't really start doing any of this grouping because we would just be looking at like how well did you fish a lake or how many fish did you pull up from a lake compared to all of the other ones, right? If, you, if you're fishing, like if you have two lakes and in one year you fish the first lake and in the second year you fish the second lake and in the third year you fish both of them, then of course the years are not comparable to each other at all because you can't compare the first year to the second year because you did a different lake and you can't compare the second year to the third year or the first year to the third year because in the third year you fished two lakes and in the other years you only fished one lake. So the conclusions that I wrote down for this is that there are significant differences in fish composition per year. Are these due to fishing the lakes differently and that is yes in different years the same lake was fished differently as such the contribution of a lake to the total amount of fish varies a lot between 2017 18 and 20. This means that probably we are not allowed to draw any conclusions across years and across lakes unless we limit ourselves to a single lake. But even there we run into issues, which we saw in, in the Lomar situation, right? Where the situation in 2017 is just completely different than the situation in 2018 and 2020. So it is really, really difficult because this massively hurts our power to detect any global changes in fish stocks across the years, right? And of course, are there solutions? Yes, there are solutions. And we can limit ourselves, we can say, well, we only look at one lake and one fish species at the same time. Um, but we run into different issues then later on. Um, but that is always the case in experiments like this. 
statistically speaking, it is better to limit the amount of lakes that you fish and just fish more in the lakes that you're looking at than to fish in more lakes which are different and just have lower number of fish from each lake. And if you do multiple years, if you want to compare your data from year one to year two, you should make sure that um, you do the same thing every year, right? If I, if I am working in a lab, for example, um, we have the same issue. If I am, for example, using a certain chemical, in 2017 and I redo my experiment in 2018 but now I use a completely different chemical then of course I cannot compare the results from 2018 to the ones from 2017. So there are some significant drawbacks in these kinds of experiments that where you look at different lakes you fish each lake differently across the different years um, and, and statistically speaking this causes a lot and a lot of issues with um, having these things like because every new thing that you do every treatment that you add every lake that you add adds another dimension to your data which means that your total amount of measurements just gets subdivided and subdivided and subdivided into smaller groups and in the end you end up with a single fish in a single condition in a single lake in a single year and of course a single measurement is no measurement you have to have at least 30 40 measurements before you can start calculating things like means and ratios and standard deviations and if I want to do statistical testing then that is kind of the important part all right so first three slides then we will go back three slides and we will take a short break unless there's more questions um, or more remarks if there are not then I will see you guys in seven eight minutes probably ten minutes so just after four we'll continue and then we'll do the last part of my um, initial look into this Bacherse project data. Um, so see you in 10 minutes. Um, let me stop the recording.